بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد إن رحمة الله قريب من المحسنين صدق الله العظيم So today we move on with our series on Ibn Ata'illah al-Iskandari's uh, Book of Wisdoms or the Kitab al-Hikam We're on page 204, it's Wisdom 170 So this is what Ibn Ata'illah says He says علم أن العبادة يتشو وفون إلى ظهور سر العناية علم أن العبادة يتشوفون إلى ظهور سر العناية فقال يختص برحمته من يشاء وعلم أن وعلم أنه لو خلاهم وذلك لترك العمل اعتمادا على الأول فقال إن رحمة الله قريب من المحسنين I'm going to read the translation of this it requires a bit of exposition to understand it better but this is what he says he says Allah knew the servants would anticipate the emergence of the mystery of providence in themselves. He knew that servants would anticipate the emergence of the mystery of providence in themselves. So then he said, he chooses whom he pleases for his mercy in the Quran. That's what Allah said. And he knew that had he left them at that, they would have abandoned all efforts by relying on the eternal so he said, surely the mercy of Allah is close to the doers of good. That for, is, is complicated. It's not so easy to understand that. So essentially, what's happening here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows in his infinite knowledge from before who is going to be receiving his mercy and who is not going to be receiving his mercy. And he knows that because his knowledge encompasses everything that will occur, that has occurred and that will occur in the future. For him, it's all the same. For us, it happens in time. We have a past and there's a future to come and there's a present. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sees it all from eternity. And that's something we're never going to understand. Just like if I am to try to listen to two people at once, I can listen to, I can concentrate on one person. If there's two people trying to speak to me, it's going to be very difficult for me to, con to concentrate on both of them at once. If there's three people trying to say something to me, I'm going to get lost. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He hears everything at this point that's being said. And if we want to take it further, from eternity, He can hear everything that has ever been said and that will ever be said, including what's being said now, at once. It's just this multi, it's just we can't even understand it, we can't even comprehend that. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's infinite self. So Allah knows what we're going to do with our free will. We're going to end up either receiving His rahmah or either uh, not receiving His rahmah. May Allah not make us of those based on our choices. Everybody makes their own choices and thus they're rewarded and they could be punished and so on. So it relates to that aspect. Now the idea here in general is saying that if people were to know that, I'm just giving you a brief example, I'm just going to give you a brief summary of this. If people to, were to know that they are of this group, the ones who are going to receive the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they could become complacent. Oh, I'm going to get there anyway. It makes no difference. For example, there's a statement which says that Allah loved Umar radiallahu anhu even when he had not yet become a Muslim because Allah knew his ending that eventually he will become a Muslim with his choice and that's what he's going to be. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had love from him from, from eternity the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with things because time applies to us but not to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So had we known about what's going to happen and that we are going to be the fortunate ones, we're going to be under the mercy of Allah, then we'd say, well, there's not really much. Sometimes you'd get lazy and we say, we don't, we're going to go there anyway. We've got a ticket anyway. Why do you have to bother about it? 
we've got a ticket anyway. We know he's going to pass us anyway. That kind of a thing. You know when you know that somebody's going to, don't worry, I'll do something for you. So you don't make enough of an effort. So that will lead to complacency. So then what should we do? Should we just keep focusing on deeds, deeds, deeds? I said, no, that's wrong as well. You shouldn't just focus on doing deeds. That's not good enough either. That's a bit strange. Why shouldn't we focus on deeds? Isn't that what we've been told? That you must focus on deeds. That you should focus on doing as many good deeds as possible. Because good deeds, they bring reward with them. They, <clears throat> they, they, they essentially have reward that comes with them and they please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, that's not good enough. Don't focus just on the deeds. Do the deeds, for sure, do the deeds. But also focus on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The deeds are just a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has good things in store. That if we are doing good and we're interested in good and we are inclined towards the good and we're willing to spend time for the good, then that's just a sign that we are, it looks like we are going in that right direction. But deeds on their own don't do anything. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and his choice and his benevolence and his gift that takes a person into paradise. Now, of course, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't have a grace on anyone, they would not do the deeds. So what do you mean then? Well, when we do the deeds, we do it for the sake of Allah. But we always hope that it's Allah who's going to forgive us. We had a wisdom, one of the previous wisdoms, that it is he who is constantly veiling us from the defects and he's forgiving so much more than had he wanted to deal with us with justice for every little mistake then we would not survive our prayers are deficient because we don't i mean it's difficult to remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the prayer in every second of that prayer so this is now the way it is explained in more detail briefly that's essentially what he says this is how he this is how it has been explained so when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned both in the quran and through the messengers that the basis for success is <clears throat> the basis for success and everything and that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what we're going to end up doing and end up reaching, which state we're going to end up reaching. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has had that, he has all of this written. So essentially everything that we do goes in accordance to what is written. And what Allah has written, he's written it in a descriptive fashion because he knows what we're going to do. So he wrote, Musa is going to do X, Y, and Z things. And Zubair is going to be doing this. And Ilyas is going to be doing this with his free will. So what we do now goes in accordance to what he wrote because he knew what we were going to do. He's not prescribing upon us. He's not, it's not prescriptive. It's actually descriptive, right? So now, whoever, whoever has been written to be of the fortunate ones, فَمَنْ سَبَقَتْ لَهُ الْعِنَايَةِ Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's special grace will be upon because he's going to do good deeds eventually, right? He may start, he may end up doing some sins. Those sins are then not harmful. Don't get this wrong. It doesn't mean that he can do sins because he doesn't know that he's going to be one of the lucky ones. So how can he do sins and say, I'm not one of the lucky ones, it's okay, I can do the sins. Just saying, this is actually giving hope to those people who have sinned but want to turn their life around and want to be of those who will receive the special bounties of Allah and the grace and go to paradise. Right now, none of us know that. We can only hope for it. And there's enough room there. There's enough room in paradise. There's enough room under the grace of Allah. So there's nothing stopping anyone except one's own self, except one's own limitation for whatever reason. So this is to say that if you have done wrong, that wrong will not harm you because then you would make tawbah, you would repent, and then you'd be of the good people. So it's in the long run, it's the discussion is there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear that this is not for everyone. He mentions many verses in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if Allah willed, He could have made everybody on the same thought, same ideology, same belief, 
worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That could have been a different design of this world though. That's why you have to understand, why didn't Allah do that? There's people who ask, why didn't Allah just let everybody stay in paradise? I mean, why don't we just go back there? You know, if you want to ask these questions, why is there this in this world? Why is there that in this world? Why don't we just say, why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leave Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayhi salam in paradise? And we could have been there by now. That's where we would have been. In fact, that's where we would have been. That's not what he wanted to do. He decided to do it differently for whatever reason. I'm not going to go and question him why he did that because this is our reality now. How can you change that? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that, look, some of you are going to be successful if you make your effort and some of you are going to fail if you don't make an effort. Some people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses them for that because Allah says in Surah Ali Imran verse 74, bi rahmatihi man yasha. Allah particularizes, particularly singles out some people for his mercy. So now people know that there's going to be some people who there's a special club whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give us special gifts to, special bounties to. I want to be part of that. Well, if you want to be part of that, then you have to do X, Y, and Z. And you have to avoid X, Y, and Z. All of it is clear, isn't it? Now, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told us of it, they would have, and we would know for some reason that, oh, we are going to be in that special, in that special area and among that special group, then it's possible that we may just not do any deeds. Do you think the Prophet ﷺ, he was the most special of people? And he was actually told clearly, غُفِرَ لَكَ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِن ذَنْبِكْ وَمَا تَأَخَّرْ for you, everything has been forgiven. Like even if you did commit a sin, it's forgiven. Even if you did commit a sin and were to commit a sin, it would be forgiven. The Prophet ﷺ was told that. But did his state change? His state didn't change. In fact, he even tried more to be thankful. That's what you call a grateful servant. You have some people who, when you give them what they're looking for, then they basically just enjoy that thing and they forget about you. Whereas there's others who are so thankful that actually you can tell that they're thankful. And that's the Prophet Sallallahu to stand for those long periods of night. May Allah give us some kind of tawfiq to do something similar to that. So that's the Prophet Sallallahu He never just relied on the fact that he was to be forgiven and that he was going to be successful. But he actually then made himself out to be properly the slave of Allah because he knows that that's why he's getting it. He is the greatest slave of Allah. That's why he's going to have the greatest reward. And that's why he's been also actually told and informed and given a guarantee and security. None of us are given that security. I mean, imagine if any of us are told that for you is all forgiveness. You are forgiven anyway. I mean, the shaitan comes and tells some people that. So Abdul Qadir Jilani, rahimahullah, once he saw a light, it says, he saw a vision. And it said, Ya Abdul Qadir, I am your Lord. And I am saying that I have absolved all the prayers of you. You don't have to pray anymore. Now imagine if you heard that. Imagine if we heard that. Like, okay, that's not bad. Um, must be special. What's going on? Now, he's an alim. And you know that this doesn't happen. There is no, I mean, only women get prayers absolved of them during their monthly cycles. Men do not get that. It's only if you, uh, for 24 hours or over, if you're in a coma or something, then your prayers are forgiven. Otherwise, men do not get that. It's only women who get that, right? But not forever, obviously. He said, you're a liar. You are shaitan. He immediately figured out, how can that happen? It hasn't happened to anybody else. Why would it happen to me for? He wasn't deluded. So then the shaitan turns around and says, or whatever this thing was, it says, you have been saved by your knowledge. Now that was the second return. You've been saved by your knowledge. That sounds good. He is saved by his knowledge. But no, his thought is higher than that. He says, no, Allah saved me, not my knowledge. It's Allah who saved me. Because at the end of the day, that knowledge is from Allah. 
And to make that knowledge work, Allah can only make that work. You may have knowledge, but you may forget it at that moment. You justify something. So many times, it's people with knowledge who justify a deed. Justify a wrong deed. Even though they've got, oh, it's because of this, I'm justified to do it because I'm in this uh, specific situation or um, there's a justification for it. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved me. And then that thing fizzled out and whatever it was. That, that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ مِّنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah's mercy is always close to the doers of good. Allah's mercy is always close to the doers of good. Now let's move on. The mercy that is discussed here, some ulama say that what this refers to, this mercy is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows these people to be the successful ones, the fortunate ones that eventually they're going to go to paradise because of the good deeds that will overcome, the good deeds that will dominate their life. MashaAllah, some people have good deeds have dominated their life throughout, right? Like there's some scholars and he said that I've never committed a, a sin. Like some scholars can actually even say that. It was in such a protected, uh, they were in such a protected environment, they were very particular, they were brought up in that way that they could actually say that I've never committed a sin. That is so difficult. That is so difficult for us to say, right, today, right? Allahu Akbar. So this mercy, according to some ulama, say the, the, the mercy which is always close to those people who are the doers of good, this is referring to the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows they're going to be good, and thus He has already designated paradise and rahmah and gifts and bounties and everything for Him. So these people... They continue to do good deeds. They don't get deluded. They try their best. Like the Prophet ﷺ is the biggest example. It's a really strange idea that this mercy, which is that Allah has written that person to be among the doers of good in the here, you know, uh, and the successful ones in the hereafter, the mercy means that this person will continue to do good deeds. He won't slacken the good deeds. That's the mercy. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we're going to be doing that, Allah gives us that special mercy as well. Essentially what that means to me is that if I make an effort in the right direction, Allah's going to assist me with His mercy. That's the good part. You know, the difference between a manual bike, the normal bike that we've had for uh, decades, and the new electric bikes, is that even in the electric ones you have to pedal right a bit. The other ones you pedal a lot and you only pedal and there's nothing else that happens. But in the electric bikes, if you've ridden them, you pedal a bit and then it just starts going by itself. And I think that's the same thing here. Allah wants us to do that initial. He's given us an electric bike. Have you guys tried an electric bike? You may not even have an idea, right? Essentially, in the other one, you have to like try hard and change the gears. And, but in an electric bike, you just have to pedal a bit and then it takes over. And you pedal a bit and then it takes over and it just does most of the job for you. I think it's about 20% yours, uh, your effort and about 80% the battery in there, as long as the battery is charged. That's what he's saying. It's a similar idea, right? If we try, there's going to be an initial struggle, but once you're on the road, then Allah will assist. That's why the hadith says very clearly, if you come to Allah walking, Allah comes to you running. He just wants an excuse to give. He wants an excuse to give. Now we can't expect not to do anything and then the bounties just shower upon us and we just become, you know, people who perform tahajjud every day. There's an effort to make. There's a mindset that has to be changed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that easy for us. Anybody who thinks that they are written as good, and subhanAllah, there are deluded, there are absolutely deluded people out there who think they're going to paradise. They've said they've seen signs. They've seen a dream. They've seen some, some crazy things. Once... Um, this woman called me and she, she was married to this guy who she said is like a wali of Allah. I said, okay, what's the problem then? I said, well, the issue is that, you know, we got into drugs, we got into a lot of other stuff, but he's still a wali of Allah. And he apparently, it, it was a bit of a crazy story. The family had contacted me to say that our sister's been overcome by this guy and she's completely deluded and so on. And the delusion there was that she thought he's a big wali of Allah, yet they're doing drugs and all sorts of stuff. Like not just drugs, a lot of other stuff. 
I don't even mention it. But she said, no, he's so pious, he's, he sees this, he sees that. Just absolute fascination and obsession with something, even though the apparent state is telling you something else. I, I hope I got through to it. I'm like, this cannot be a wali of Allah. Yes, wali of Allah can make mistakes. But they don't make mistakes for too long. They fall and they get up. People fall, but we get up. You make a mistake, you do tawbah and you carry on. When you stay down for a very long time, then that wilayat doesn't sound like wilayat to me. That doesn't sound like friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That doesn't sound like friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why you cannot think that I'm sorted and leave action. That is absolute deception. That doesn't work for anyone. On the other hand, the person who just focuses on action without asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance, without hoping in Allah's mercy, that person is also ignorant of Allah. That person is ignorant of Allah. He doesn't understand that that is not the way Allah wants it. He doesn't, Allah doesn't want us to just focus on action. Allah wants to feel our attention to Him because that's really why we do the deeds. أَقِيمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي Establish prayer for my remembrance, not for anything else. Not to show as proof that I've done all, I've done all of these prayers. Why can't you let me go to paradise? The prayer was supposed to be for me. That prayer was supposed to get you closer to Allah. And the beauty of this book is that that's what it does. Each of these aphorisms, they help us to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better. They give us these little openings and these little secrets as to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relates to us. So that's why constantly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to remember Him when we have a difficulty, that we're doing sabr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows He's taking care of me, and when we have prosperity. At home, when good things happen, you've got some new fruit, you've got some good food, you've uh, just enjoyed a meal, right? Some other success. Tell the children as well, where did this come from? Have you thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's only when children start feeding these things in their life, that Allah will become part of their life. I give you an example. There's a family where pretty much everybody has glasses. So the mother told the daughter, because the mother has glasses, the father has glasses, the older son has glasses, told the daughter that just be, become 12, 13 years old and you're going to have glasses as well. That's what the mother said. Right? Thinking it's just the norm. This daughter started to make dua. Nobody knew that. It's just she's standing this later. So she makes dua. She's now the only one in that family who does not have glasses. Her two younger brothers after that have glasses as well. Or need glasses. She's the only one who doesn't in the whole family. And she said, because when mom said this to me, when my mom said this to me, I started making dua. Now, that is the presence of Allah in your mind. That's the presence of Allah in your life. That worked for you. Allah worked for you. I just had a discussion with this 17, 18-year-old girl who has issues, brought up in a Muslim family but has issues. question is, why do you believe? I'm like, because I felt Allah so many times. I feel Allah. Why should I go anywhere else? Why should I go and check out another religion? Because I'm getting everything that I want. It's almost like there should be an inquiry. You should check. Why should you check? Why put yourself up to confusion? You're happy with what you have. It's working for you. Um, somebody called me from California once. Said that my father, he's had to be in, he had some issue. He had to be in prison. Now he's out. But he can't get a job because it's, uh, you know, his, because of his conviction, he's finding it tough to get a job. In fact, what happens is that he sometimes goes for interview and uh, uh, so on the phone it's fine when they have a phone interview when he goes in then he loses the job because he also has a big beard right he also has a decent beard so now this poor daughter of his the adults they're asking that can can is he allowed they're asking the question as we have that is he allowed to trim his beard to a short so i don't know i just said no you can't right you shouldn't do that 
that's not that that's really against uh, the understanding of uh, the the jurist of how a beard should be and uh, i said do this i gave her something to read this many times and left it to allah i get an email from her of about i didn't expect I mean, it's from you know people call you you know a few weeks later just wanted to mention to you that uh, that's what my father did. We started reading that and he got a job and a very good job very soon afterwards. Then we had a relative who had immigration issues. We gave them that thing. They passed that, that formula on to them and he said their immigration thing was just sorted. It's like, alhamdulillah. That's nice enough. These people are going to be very strong in their faith because they've used these things to, for, for it, and it's worked for them. That doesn't mean that you know, because sometimes Allah may not give you, right? But Allah will give you when you try. Allah gives you if you do the right things and everything comes in motion. That experience is the best experience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah, you have to show the effort, right? He, he carried on and he persevered. He persevered and he carried on. And there's so many stories like this. I mean, there's numerous stories like this. Uh, another person just contacted me. He said that they had a video of their of their child. They took a like a memorable video, and it was like the most beloved video to them. It's like the most liked video. Like you know when you take a certain picture or a, a video, or whatever, and you have like a wow, that's really good. That came out very good. You know, you're, you're very emotionally attached to it. But he lost it. He said I couldn't find it. Right? It was just gone. And said, suddenly, two years later, I think it was two or four years later, my sister, she says, sent me a WhatsApp message and said, I found this video in an external hard drive or external memory I had. You know, maybe, you know, you'll remember this. And she said, that was the exact same video. I'd not told anybody that I, would, I was really looking forward to that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought it there for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works in some amazing ways. Always behind a veil though. Nothing will pop up, right, just out of nothing. It'll always happen. But that's the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we really, really need to bring this home. We really need to speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the house, in everything. Attribute everything to Him. Tell the children to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only way we're going to make Allah a reality. And that's the only way our children, inshaAllah, will feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and uh, grow up with that idea, with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is completely wrong just to keep focusing on action. Yes, we must do the action. While we're doing the action, we're doing it for the sake of Allah. Allah has to be part of the action. Actions cannot be without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no, they're empty, they're devoid. It's the real spirit of an action is the sincerity, the focus on Allah and the purpose. Uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he says, وَمَنِ اسْتَنَدَ إِلَى الْعَمَلِ دُونَ النَّظْرِ لِلْقُدْرَةِ وَالْمَشِيئَةِ السَّابِقَ فَهُوَ جَاهِلٌ بَعِيدٌ عَنِ الْحَضْرَةِ غَافِلٌ Whoever relies upon his deeds without even focusing on the qudrat of Allah or Allah's choice, Allah's previous decisions, Allah's knowledge and so on, then that person is absolutely ignorant and very far from the presence of Allah and completely Clueless. Woman jama'a baynahuma, but the one who combines between the two, who does the deeds, his gaze is on Allah, and he knows that Allah knows everything, and he hopes for the best from Allah, then fahuwa muhaqqikun kamil. That person is the one who has it right. He's reached the perfection. May Allah give us that. May Allah give us that combination. Some of the, one of the scholars said, he said, Laysa kullu man talaba nala. Not everybody who will seek, not everybody who seeks will attain. وَلَا كُلُّ مَنْ نَالَ وَصَلَ And neither, so some may attain something, but they may not reach the goal. They may attain something, but they may not reach the goal. Some people may reach the goal, and they may comprehend the reality. And eventually, they will become fortunate. But not everybody that happens to. It's an effort that we make to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why they say, كَم مِّن وَاحِدٍ حُرِمَ مِنَ الْمِنَا بِمِنَا 
How many are there who spend so much money and get to Mina or Arafah for that matter and then they lose Arafah or Mina? They don't get the benefit of it because they, they get involved in a fight with somebody. They get involved with something else. They're just not focused. Yet they've got to Mina. What he says is that we must make that effort and there's a certain threshold you get to and then it just becomes easier after that. It just facilitates and just gets easier. I don't know if you've had this experience with anything else as well, where it was just so difficult, some worldly difficulty, right? It was just so difficult to do this. And then suddenly everything just becomes easier the next day. I've had these cases where there's a project I've got, whether that's to do with publishing or something else, and it's just difficult. You don't even feel like doing it. You know, sometimes this is a procrastination thing that people, if they've got two tasks, one is difficult one, one is the easy one, they keep doing the easy ones. They keep putting off the difficult tasks. Right? Now, one thing that I would suggest to people is that if you've got a difficult task, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy. And you'd be surprised. Sometimes I'm banging my head about something and I just can't figure it out. It's a really complicated issue. You go for salat, like namaz time, you go for salat, you make a dua there, Allah, make that easy. You come back and subhanallah, it's all easy. Like, how did that resolve that? It's almost like there's a knot that's just been untied and it becomes easy. Try it. Do it. Experience it. And it's amazing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's see what Shaykh Abdullah Kangohi says about this. See if... Uh, it's, I mean, does this make sense? Now I'm going to read it again. He knew that servants would anticipate the emergence of the mystery of providence in themselves. So he said he chooses whom he pleases for his mercy. They were told that uh, some people are going to be the lucky ones, right? So he chooses whom he pleases for his mercy for those lucky ones. And he knew that had he left them at that, if he had told them about that, and left them at that, then they would have abandoned all efforts by relying on the eternal decree. I'm sorted anyway. I've got, a, I've got a place. I've got a seat. So he said, surely the mercy of Allah is close to the doers of good. Which means that as we continue to try, that mercy will continue to be with us. And the good deeds that we will do with a focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is part of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Shaykh Abdullah Gangohi says. The mercy of Allah most high is of two kinds. The general mercy and the special mercy. There's a general mercy that everybody gets and there's a very special package that some people get. Right? There's a general package everybody can have. And there's... General mercy is for the entire creation. That's a package anybody can have, right? By virtue of this general mercy, he bestowed existence on everyone and everything. That's the mercy. For Allah to be have mercy, been merciful, he's allowed everybody to be in this world. As well as sustaining them until an appointed time. Even the denier and the disbeliever, they receive sustenance, food, drink, air. That's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's general mercy. This mercy is not restricted to any particular being, but extends to all things, animals and everything else in the world. Thus Allah Most High tells us that His mercy embraces all things. This is the mercy of creation and sustenance. This is the general mercy. The special mercy then is His proximity and grace, His closeness. Its basis is divine will. Why does he do that? Who does he give it to? It's his will, whoever he wants to give it to. He bestows this special mercy on whomever he wills without any intermediate cause. I believe that if you do good, your children will benefit. Right? That's an experience people have had. If our grandparents have done good, I mean, I think I am what I am because of my grandparents, my, my, my parents, my, my grandparents and somebody up there. I think I've got some dua from someone. I'm sure, you know, there's a lot of people who feel that way. If there's goodness, it's because of something like that. So if there's not been, if you can't find any goodness in your family, well, be a creator of the goodness for the next generations. Can we not do that? I don't have any goodness in my family. My was this and my grandfather, maybe somebody's going to say that. Well, change the story. Turn it around. Be the good one for your generations because you have responsibility. Everybody that your children and grandchildren are going to come from you, you are going to be their grandpa grandparents. So you can change it. Don't let it carry on like that if you feel bad about it. So he says that 
um, he bestows this special mercy on whomever he wills without any intermediate cause by directing a special mercy to a person he bestows his proximity to him his closeness to him the shaykh here refers to this special mercy in his in allah's eternal knowledge allah mosai was aware that people would be desirous of this special mercy they desire that the mysteries and secrets of this special mercy be revealed to them he is explaining it a bit differently subhanallah so that they can attain his proximity. They want to know that I am one of the special, I am one of those who, have, who, are, who Allah has a special attention for. I w they want to know this. They want to know that I am one of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has special grace for. I mean, it'd be nice to know. But the problem is we may become complacent if we know. That's what he's saying. Motivated by this quest, they practice righteous deeds and supplicate for the realization of this aim. They feel that on account of their virtuous deeds, they have become deserving of Allah's special mercy. Dismissing this baseless idea though, right? Just because you do some good deeds, you think you're sorted. That's the problem. You can't be guaranteed. Dismissing this baseless idea, Allah says in the Quran, Allah chooses whom he pleases for his mercy. That's absolutely Allah's prerogative. In other words, the quest and righteous deeds of people are not the basis for the acquisition of his special mercy. The basis is actually Allah's will and his mercy. Although righteous deeds, so that means should we stop doing righteous deeds? He's saying, although righteous deeds, supplication and efforts are not the cause of for the acquisition of Allah's special mercy, they are undoubtedly signs of this special eternal bounty. They're just a sign of it that Allah has an attention. If we're doing good deeds, it just shows that that is a sign that Allah loves us. He's allowing us to do good deeds. But it's not a guarantee that we're going to make it. But it's something you hope for, you hope in. When by the grace of Allah Most High, the servant practices righteousness, it indicates that a servant might be one of those elect ones. The servant should understand. And you see, this, this is, if I'm doing good deeds and I think I'm sorted, I am one of those, then I'm going to be, it's going to lead to arrogance. It's going to lead to complacence. It's going to lead to maybe looking down upon others. It's going to be, uh, it may lead to me thinking I'm a chosen one. And so on and so forth. Special. And that's a problem. Humans can't deal with that. That's a fitna for humans to think they're better than others. That's why the way Allah has sorted out is very, uh, humbling right he says the servant should understand that he must maintain this practice of righteous deeds in the hope that he will be delivered ultimately into Allah's special mercy if however the servant was not exhorted to practice virtue but was left with only the belief that Allah most high grants his special mercy to whomever he wills he would have simply placed his reliance on destiny thus re refraining from righteous deeds if somebody mistook this and said Oh, Allah has written for some people to be in paradise and some people to be in hell. I don't know which one it is. What's the point? What's the point of even trying? It's written anyway. He's not going to get anywhere. Because the sign of being on the right side is the good deed. I hope that makes it clear. That's why he then says, Hence Allah Most High says, Surely the mercy of Allah is close to the doers of good. If you are a doer of good, you do good deeds, then the mercy of Allah is close to you. So there's every incentive to do good deeds. So don't ever look at the fact that, oh, it's up to Allah, so we're going to just leave it. Do the good deeds, but at the same time, think that that is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is good in store for us, and He allows us to continue that. It is therefore impro improper to abandon righteousness. Along with righteousness, hope should be in Allah Most High, but not in one's deeds. Should one repose hope in one's deeds, it should be tantamount to reliance on oneself. Let's put it this way, right? Let's just say there's a project. Somebody wants um, to hire somebody capable of a certain thing that they have in their company. So what they want is they set out a certain project for you to do. So you do the project. They're going to judge you on what they feel when they see you demonstrate that project. Not on the project, but the way they see you deal with that project. Right? Now, 
it's, it happens all the time. Sometimes what happens is that you think your project was better than the other guys, but they got chosen. Why did they get chosen for? Is this like some kind of exam where everybody must get the same marks? It's up to the employer. He, he, his project might have been slightly deficient, but the way they carried out their demeanor, their interaction might have been superior. They might have seen that, okay, your project is better, but they might be threatened by you. Allah is never threatened by anybody, but in a workplace, sometimes you're overqualified. Do you understand? You're going to take somebody who's got the whole package. That's the kind of thing here, that you can't rely just on your project. You rely on the way you carry the whole thing out. Like what you show, what you think you're going to bring to the company and whether you're going to be able to interact. That's from a worldly perspective. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see the sincerity. He wants to see that we're doing something for Him. Not just the deeds, but the deeds are necessary to show. That's the vehicle. The deeds are just the vehicle. That's why it is therefore improper to just abandon righteousness. But along with righteousness, hope should be in Allah Most High and not in one's deeds. Should one repose hope on one's deeds, it should be tantamount to reliance on oneself. That's, that's a really good point. If you think that your deeds are going to carry you, that means I'm going to carry myself because the deeds are mine. That means I'm just relying on myself and not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's for Allah, but Allah is going to give us tawfiq. I, I, I think that makes it very, very clear. Finally, what Ibn Ata'illah says, he has, uh, Shaykh Abdullah Gangohi has actually clarified it. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to have that balance of good deeds and attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah make us of the chosen ones. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. Tabarak tiyad al-jalali wal-ikram. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ahli Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. Allahumma khfil lana wa rahamna wa aafina wa ahdina wa rizuqna. اللهم اغفر لأمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات يا الله يا الله we ask you for your special mercy يا الله we ask you for your special mercy أو الله grant us of your special mercy أو الله from your generosity أو الله from your benevolence أو الله make us of those who are close to you and أو الله make us of those who love you أو الله grant us your love O oh Allah, make our surrounding conducive for the practice of your faith. O oh Allah, we have so many distractions. O oh Allah, we have so many distractions, divergences. O oh Allah, we have, we have become negligent. O oh Allah, we have committed sins that have brought darknesses in our lives, in our hearts, that have caused friction between people, that have taken the blessing away. We ask you for forgiveness from these things. O oh Allah, some sins have become so common and so normal for us that they've become part of our life and we don't even consider them sins anymore. O oh Allah, the evil of so many evils have left our heart and departed our hearts. O oh Allah, the goodness of so many goodnesses has departed the hearts. And O oh Allah, there is a skewed understanding. O oh Allah, grant us true understanding. Grant us the correct understanding. O oh Allah, grant us the ability to see the the right as the right and the wrong as the wrong and O oh Allah allow us to follow the right and to abstain from the wrong O oh Allah make your obedience beloved to us and O oh Allah make your disobedience hated in our hearts O oh Allah whatever permissible projects and desires we have O oh Allah we ask you to fulfill them especially desires based on the hereafter O oh Allah make them easy for us for you it's easy to facilitate for you it's just a command O oh Allah for us it's a lifelong toil Make it easy for us. O oh Allah, we sit here today. O oh Allah, many are sitting here today. They could have been so many other places. O oh Allah, grant them a huge reward. O oh Allah, grant them huge grace and benevolence and generosity. And from your gifts, from your abundant gifts, from your profound gifts. O oh Allah, bless our families and protect our families. And O oh Allah, grant the love of you in the hearts of all of our progeny until the day of judgment. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, O oh Allah, make us of the special servants. Make us of those who have written us fortunate. And O oh Allah, make all of these things facilitated for us. Make your obedience easy for us. Make our, allow us to turn our gaze to you in everything we do and grant us sincerity. O oh Allah, accept whatever little deeds that we have done and forgive us our shortcomings in that regard. And O oh Allah, bless uh, us and grant cure for those who are sick and ill and who are suffering. And O oh Allah, Bless those and have your mercy, especially on those who've departed. 
O oh Allah, they've departed. O oh Allah, allow us to prepare for our departure as well. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, grant us the karima la ilaha illallah on our deathbed. Allow us to, uh, whatever journeys we have ahead of us, especially the journey of the hereafter, make all of that easy for us. O oh Allah, whatever business we may have, whatever work we may be doing, O oh Allah, give us blessings and mm, barakah in that. Grant us general protection. Allow us to rise to the demands of this time and to do things correctly. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. Wassalamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi rahmatika ya rahmatika. Jazakallah khair for listening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless you. And if you're finding this useful, you know, um, uh, as they say, do that like button and subscribe button and forward it on to others. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.